Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, what if I told you that our nation is governed by corporations, special interest groups, and anyone that has money? Now, I'm not here to tell you that Steve Jobs created some conspiracy to let Apple products rule the world. I'm here to simply point out some facts. Today I'm going to talk about how money influences politics. And it happens through political action committees, lobbyists, and the media. From Lincoln to Obama, from your local city council member to your nation's leader, money has an incredible influence on how political representatives are elected and what decisions they make while they're in office. In the elections that get these leaders and representatives in the position, an incredible amount of money initially goes into the campaign. This is really a gamble when you look at it because individuals and groups are giving money in hope that that money will get a representative into office. In the past century, we've seen a beast arise from the depths of politics known as a PAC, or Political Action Committee. And these groups, to put it simply, raise money for campaigns to aid the financial burden that is campaigning. In 2010, a Supreme Court ruling called Citizens United decided that, uh, that groups independent of a politician's poli uh, formal campaign fund can make political expenditures of their own. And these became known as super PACs. And this allowed corporations to give unlimited amounts of money uh, to, to fund political advertisements and other campaign costs, which was a practice previously illegal. So for example, if a corporation supported gay marriage, they were previously limited as to how much money they could give to support a politician who supported gay marriage in his campaign. However, today, through the use of super PACs, uh, corporations can anonymously give unlimited amounts of money to go towards advertisements that may make statements on behalf of the politician's cause, which may be gay marriage. Um, MotherJones.com, uh, according, according to the Mother Jones, they say that the 1860 presidential campaign uh, from Abraham Lincoln cost about $2.8 million in today's money, but the 2008 election between Obama and McCain had a combined campaign cost of $1.4 billion. Now, after all the super PACs have been milked and all the campaigns have been completed, a candidate finally makes it into office, and this is where the next beast comes into play, lobbyists. And a lobbyist isn't a clerk that checks you in at a fancy hotel. Uh, they are actually kind of like a political action committee's smarter cousin. So when a politician is in office, a lobbying individual or group can attempt to persuade a politician to make political decisions in favor of, partic of a particular cause. So for example, if I supported a lobbyist group that backed the fast food industry, I might lobby for a politician to fight a bill that could limit what companies could put in their chicken nuggets. So unfortunately, uh, lobbyist power and influence comes mainly from two things, that's votes and money. And the votes are there because representatives and politicians, like anybody else, want to keep their job. And they obviously do that by getting votes and becoming reelected. Uh, and this could be a negative factor because politicians may make decisions in office that are really just being made because of whether or not it will get them reelected. The money is an incentive for politicians because it can help them get reelected and it can help back issues that are favored by that politician's political party affiliation. And this is further evidence that money has an incredible influence on politics and government. The third way money influences politics is indirect, but nonetheless irrefutably important. We see it when we turn on CNN and Fox, and yes, this third animal is the media. So why does the media do what it does? Well, they're not just there to inform the public of what's going on. They're there, like any other business, to make money. So this alone creates truth in the statement that money influences the media. So then we can ask the question, how does the media influence politics? There are actually two big ways. So as you may recall from watching the documentary Patriocracy, the increased subjectivity of day-to-day -day news reporting has caused a tendency for news stations to make opinionated statements, and these may influence how a voter feels about a particular issue or who he or she might vote for in the next election. Similarly, Politicians may be careful about what they may or may not say <clears throat> due to a media tendency to spin things out of context or distort a politician's intent with his or her words. In conclusion, 
Money certainly has a definite presence and influence within politics and government. And this occurs through the mediums of political action committees, lobbyist groups, and the American media. So whether it's your next door neighbor or your next door neighbor's phone company, individuals and groups alike are giving money to political causes, super PACs, lobbyists, and forms of media. And it all has the same effect. It influences politics.